Hey everyone, it's Leela with Miss Kiss Creations. Welcome back to my channel. Today's Tumblr tutorial, I'm going to show you my famous blue alcohol ink tumblers. Now this video is made for beginners, so I'm going to go very slowly and in depth with all the details, all the questions I've received over the years regarding these tumblers. And like always, all of my materials will be posted in my description below, including some direct links and coupon codes. And don't forget to follow me on all of my social Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. With all that being said, let's go ahead and get started with this tutorial. As you saw in the beginning of the video, I am making three tumblers for y'all. I wanted to make these tumblers to show y'all the different types of tumblers. So I first start by sanding these tumblers down with a 180 grit sanding block. I've used anywhere between 60 to 180 grit sanding block when sanding my tumblers. I do these sandings because I think about it like it's like prepping a car or prepping your nails. You want to make sure you sand that base to really get a nice, even, rough surface so that epoxy and paints can stick to that tumbler. Once I'm finished sanding these tumblers, I then clean up my station and then I wipe my tumblers down with 91% alcohol. You want to make sure that your alcohol is at least 91% because if it is anything lower, then it just doesn't clean it well enough and so your epoxy might repel. You wanna make sure you are using a brand new paper towel when wiping down your tumblers. You don't want any excess oils or anything to be transferred to your tumblers. I use a brand new paper towel and I cut my paper towels into thirds and sometimes fourths to save on materials. And you'll see that little container that I store my 91% alcohol in. Well, that'll be linked in my description below. Don't worry, because I know I get a lot of questions on where I bought that. I originally bought that from the Dollar Tree, but I've seen them all over Amazon recently. Your 91% alcohol is going to dry within minutes, and once it's dry, we're going to move on with the next step, and that's adding black paint or spray paint to the tumbler. So I'm going to paint one tumbler, and then I'm going to spray paint the other two. The reason why I'm doing this is because I know a lot of people, they don't have access to spray paint or they're not able to spray paint, so I just want to show you all the different techniques to use for these tumblers. I am using pop of color black paint and I'm using a makeup brush from Wet n Wild. And all I do is I shake that black paint container and then I add that paint to the tumbler and I'm adding very thick coats because you don't wanna see the stainless steel. Sometimes my coats are thin so I have to allow this dry for about 20 to 25 minutes and then I have to go in with the second coat. So if you see a lot of streaks or maybe the stainless steel is exposed a little bit, you can always let this first coat dry and then go in with your second coat. Now for this specific tumbler, I'm going to have more blues than black on the tumbler, so I wasn't really concerned too much about not having like an even coat. Um, but if you are going to apply less alcohol inks and have more black exposed, then you might wanna add two coats of that paint. As for my other tumblers, what I do before I spray paint is I add that tumbler arm to my tumbler, and then I take some painter's tape to tape off the inside of that tumbler so that excess paint will not go inside the inside. There's multiple ways to tape off your tumbler or to avoid having your paint go in the inside, whichever way is easier for you. I do live in an apartment, so you will see how I have my setup whenever I'm spray painting my tumblers. I don't just have a backyard anymore, so it is a little harder, but I've made it work. So now I have my kitchen gloves. I've used these for about two years. These are great to avoid any spray paint going on your hands and arms. And I am using my Ultra Matte Rust-Oleum spray paint. I only am using this because I have this on hand. If I had satin or gloss black spray paint, I would be using the satin or gloss. It does not have to be matte. You can use any finished spray paint. The epoxy will stick to the tumbler. And here I am with my little spray paint setup. All I do is I put a tote on my deep freezer and I spray paint into the tote. I purchased this tote from Walmart and I just grabbed the biggest tote that they had for sale that day. And all I'm doing is taking my spray paint and I'm just slowly spray painting around my tumbler. You don't need to have your spray paint to be perfect. It doesn't need to be, you know, the best spray paint job ever. I just wanna make sure that this spray paint is completely covered with black spray paint. No stainless steel exposed. Sometimes I do have some drips around this tumbler, but that's okay. It's going to get covered up with some alcohol ink and it's going to look great. 
And yes, my camera is fogging. I do live in Florida and it was so humid this day. So I try to hurry up once I notice, but it makes kind of a cool effect. So let this dry for about 20 to 25 minutes and then we'll move on with that next step. And the next step is adding the epoxy to the tumbler. Make sure you are removing that painter's tape before adding your epoxy or that painter's tape will stick to your epoxy. And here's the list of alcohol inks I will be using. You can use any colors you like and as many colors as you like, as long as you have that white alcohol ink of any brand. Make sure you are not using a mixative. A mixative is a thicker consistency than alcohol ink. So it's not going to swirl with those colors and swirl in the epoxy. It's just going to stay on the epoxy and not move anywhere. So make sure you are not using a mixative and make sure you're using a white alcohol ink. My first tumbler is going to be the 20 ounce skinny tumbler and I am using 40 mLs of epoxy. That's 20 mLs part A and 20 mLs part B, totaling 40 mLs of epoxy. I know that sounds like a lot of epoxy. It's going to feel weird placing that on a 20 ounce skinny stainless steel tumbler, but trust me, once you place it on there, you need a lot of epoxy to have these colors swirl. I receive a lot of questions about why their colors aren't swirling. It's mostly because you are not using enough epoxy. Now I will say I usually have a couple mLs of epoxy left over, so I put about 38 milliliters of epoxy, but I'd rather have some epoxy left over than not enough. So make sure you are applying this around your tumbler and also make sure your tumbler station is very level because a lot of times people will have what we call a mushroom top or a mushroom bottom. That's whenever your epoxy bubbles or it, it runs to the top or the bottom because your station is not level. So purchase a level from the Dollar Tree or your local hardware store to make sure your station is level so you have a nice smooth level tumbler. So all I did was I applied my epoxy to my tumbler. I added a little bit of heat to pop any bubbles. And then now I'm going in with all of the colors. I am not applying these colors in certain order. I'm not applying them in certain spots. You can hardly even see these colors on the black tumbler and that's the purpose of it. So you're going to apply those three colors or as many colors as you like on your tumbler. And once all of your colors are applied on your tumbler, that's when you're going to add your white last. So make sure you're adding your white over those colors. That white is going to allow those colors to pop. And you'll see I'm adding those whites and you'll see the blue rising up from the white and you'll see how beautiful it becomes. Now what I've learned over the years is go back in with your colors over your white to add that extra pop. So that's something I didn't do in the original video but now I'm adding those colors over the white and it just it creates such a gorgeous glow on that black background. It's so beautiful. And then I'm going to have my heat and I do have this heat gun on high and you'll see that those inks are moving. Now your tumbler is going to drip possibly with your um, epoxy. That's okay, let your tumbler drip. Once it goes back on the turner, it's going to even right back up. And also you can move your turner left to right or counterclockwise and clockwise as you see that I'm doing as I'm applying some heat to the tumbler. And as you're applying that heat to the tumbler, you'll see those colors really mix and really move around. So this specific tumbler, I didn't want a lot of the inks on the tumbler. I wanted more black and I didn't want it to be super swirly. So I took my tumbler off the turner and then I just placed my tumbler right side up and I let those inks really drip up and down and you'll see those swirls turns more into like blobs, I guess. <laughs> so it just has like a cool different effect and look how pretty this is. I love it. This is like my OG original one that I started with five years ago. So I might just keep this. So let's move on to that next tumbler and I'll show you another technique. Now let's move on to our next tumbler. It's a 30 ounce tumbler. I am applying 60 mLs of epoxy on this tumbler. That's 30 mLs part A and 30 mLs part B. Again, it's going to feel like a lot of epoxy, but I promise you it's going to be worth it and that's how you get those swirls. 
Once that epoxy is applied to your tumbler, you're going to apply a little bit of heat to the tumbler, just enough to pop any of those bubbles, and then you're going to add your inks. The one thing I did different with this tumbler is I wanted to add some pink or purple, so I added raspberry from Tim Holtz. So I'm still using the same blues, I just added this nice fuchsia color to really pop, and honestly, this is my favorite tumbler of the three. So I'm doing the same thing, I am just adding my inks all over the tumbler and no specific order and I wanted a little bit more alcohol ink than black on this one so if you add more heat to your tumblers you're going to have more of a swirl okay so your tumbler is gonna swirl more because you're adding more heat you're thinning that epoxy you're letting those inks really spin around and turn around the tumbler so that's what I wanted to do you'll see I'm adding more of those inks and then I'm adding that heat with my heat gun on high and I'm moving around those colors. Now, sometimes people add way too much heat. You see that I'm adding that heat, but I'm moving that heat gun around very quickly. Don't add your heat in one area or it's going to strip away that color. So make sure you keep moving that heat gun to add all of that heat to have this beautiful swirl on your tumblers. And you can always let it spin for a couple of minutes, stop your turner and then let it spin again, turn your turner the other way and just let it do its thing because it's so beautiful and it's always gonna come out differently, but beautifully. And now let's do that third tumbler. This is a tumbler that I painted black. Now this tumbler's technique, I don't need as much epoxy because I'm not going to allow that epoxy to turn. So this is a 30 ounce stainless steel tumbler. I use about 30 millers of epoxy. That's 15 mLs part A and 15 mLs part B, totaling 30 mLs of epoxy. And you'll see why I didn't use as much epoxy. And you'll notice I have a lot of stainless steel exposed because this one I'm going to add more ink than the black. So I wasn't so concerned about having a nice even black tumbler because most of that ink is going to be on the tumbler rather than the black. And like the other two tumblers, I'm applying that alcohol ink all around the tumbler. I'm using only those three blues. I did not want to add the raspberry to this tumbler. And I'm making sure to really cover this tumbler with a lot of inks. So you'll see I'm trying to cover it all over. And then I'm going to add that white alcohol inks over the, the blues and you'll see that that blue is starting to pop. Now, instead of adding heat to this, I'm going to take my gloved finger and I'm going to smear this alcohol ink. I know, it sounds weird, don't touch the tumbler, but in this case, we wanna touch the tumbler. I'm applying very light pressure and I'm making just zigzags or Z's on my tumbler. And you can lift up your gloved hand if you want. You can just keep it on the tumbler like I did. It's really not gonna make a difference because these colors are gonna mix around and create something beautiful. You'll see how gorgeous this is. I don't know why, but I just love this mess abstract type of art so this just speaks to me and I just love this tumbler so much and it's even more gorgeous in person so all I did was I grabbed my heat gun and I moved around that uh, inks just a little bit but not too much because this is basically done and you'll see the final results at the end of the video this tumbler is so different but it's also like I don't know it's just it's beautiful. So if you don't like this one, I understand, but let's see all three of these tumblers while they're spinning on the turners. And here are the three tumblers while they've been turning for about 20 to 25 minutes. You're going to allow these tumblers to spin on the cup turner for about four hours. After four hours, you're going to turn off your cup turner and you're going to let your tumblers air dry or air cure for another 20 hours. You need a total drying time of 24 hours. You can leave your tumblers on the turner or if you have a drying station, you can remove your tumblers from your turners and place your tumblers on your drying station so you have more turners for your next tumblers. Once these tumblers are cured, you're going to go in with your X-Acto knife and you're going to clean up the rim of these tumblers. And you'll see all I'm doing is I'm taking my X-Acto knife and I'm just removing any of that excess epoxy around the rim. Once that excess epoxy is removed, what we're going to do is we're going to do another coat of epoxy. So you do want to epoxy over this. The reason for that 
is so your alcohol inks are not exposed because in some areas your alcohol inks might be exposed and might not be protected by the epoxy. So you just want to make sure you are giving a final coat of epoxy to these tumblers to make sure that your design is nice and sealed. If you do wanna add a decal to these tumblers, what you'll do is you will go ahead and remove all that excess epoxy from the rim as you see I'm doing here. Add your decal and then epoxy over your tumbler to lock in that decal and your design. So if you do want a decal, make sure you add your decals, your vinyls now. Go ahead and epoxy, you might need to epoxy two coats, and then go ahead and finish up with cleaning your rim again and then cleaning the inside of your tumbler. I didn't want to get into epoxying over decals and adding decals to tumblers because I just wanted to focus on this design and I wanted to explain this design in depth. But if you do have any questions when it comes to designing your tumbler or adding decals or even how to epoxy a tumbler, make sure to leave a comment in below and I'll always create a video for you. And I also have a lot of beginner tutorials that will be listed in my description below for you to help out during your tumbler journey. I personally love my art over my decals, so I keep these tumblers completely bare, decal free, so the art can speak for itself, but y'all can do whatever you like. Again, these videos are made for inspiration, and I know you're going to create something beautiful. So let's put these lids on these tumblers, and let me show y'all the final results. And these are gorgeous, and they're even more gorgeous in person. Look at these colors, and again, you guys don't be afraid to use all of these funky colors together and really create something beautiful because I know you will. Honestly, that purple one with the raspberry and that pink, I have to keep that one because it's my favorite. And I have to unfortunately let these other two go. So these will be available on my website, misskisscreations.com. And I also have other tumblers available for sale for y'all to check out. And don't forget to find Miss Kiss Creations on all of our socials, Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. Please don't forget to follow, like, or subscribe. That really does help small businesses grow. And remember, that's free. So thanks y'all so much for watching. I had such a great time with these tumblers and I cannot wait to see what you guys create. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see y'all next time.